Afternoon everyone, I uh, thought I'd pop in for a reasonably quick chat with you just to talk about a couple of stories and uh, just have a chat with you uh, about what I did on the weekend and the wedding uh, and things like that so I thought we'd have a quick one today. Um, pop in the chat if you are coming in live and say hi, I notice Creative Films is actually here. I'm just going to say hi in the chat. I might even say hi in the photography videography school. Let me just come back to here. Uh, make sure too, guys, you join the photography videography school if you are popping in. I'm just going to show you. You can look at this live. Um, Because we're going to give it a couple of minutes on the pre-show and then we'll get started actually on the chat. But I'm just going to put a thing on here just about to go live. And make sure you do join us here, guys. Make sure you join this site, Photography Videography School. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, we've now got around, what is it, 2,600 users now. So it's grown really fast. Uh, so please join us in here. This is the best place ever uh, to post your work and get critique uh, work, share your website pages, uh, do everything else. So please join us on this site. Uh, I'm only letting positive comments on here. If anyone basically uh, gets on there and tries to slam other photographers or whatever, they're not gonna be part of this group. So please join us on that group. I really would love to see you uh, on there. It's a perfect place for you to promote your work and Instagram feeds and everything else. Um, just let me close that now so I've done that. So let's see who's online um, before we start. I can't be here too long today because I've got to leave at around about 2.30ish. Uh, I'm doing a concert photography tonight, um, so I won't be able to stay any longer than around an hour at the most. Uh, I'll have to pop out in a minute because I'm still charging batteries. I'll have to change that uh, battery. Uh, let's click over and see who we've got in here. Um, so we've got... Recrat, I think it is, or Richard, I'm not sure. Sue, g'day Sue, good to see you on here. It's great to see you actually put a comment in. Uh, g'day Ron, now we just have to get you to actually put some questions in, Sue. Ron says, hi, Jason says, I love your show, thanks so much, Jason. Barry Street said, hi, David. Uh, Johnson City Eros says, hello from Tennessee. Just having Coke today, guys, because I'm working tonight. Um, Joshua said, hey, David, messaging you from Toronto. Ron says, yes, Damien in second. <laughs> Mickey Blue Eyes is also here from Sweden. Max says, hi, David. Mike says, howdy, from Boulder. Van says, hi, from Michigan, USA. This is Van. Um, Johnson City says, crack open a coffee. <laughs> I will be cracking open the coffee with you on Friday, guys, definitely. Um, not today, though, because like I said, I've got to work tonight, so I'm going to stay... Um, no coffee, I should say. Um, Mickey Blue Eyes is saying hi from Sweden. Uh, I've read that before. Hello from Santiago. San Anto Antonio, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, and Thomas says, greetings from North Carolina. Sue says, hey, Mike, I'm from West uh, Avada. Um, Kevin says, hello, David. Was just looking at the Sigma 135 for my Sony a7 III. What do you think? Kevin, I, I'm dying to try it. I can't get one out here. Uh, I'm dying to have a go at those lenses. I did have a, a meeting with a, a, a guy from, actually, that uh, represents Sigma, and he said he was going to look after me, but nothing's come about from that. So I'm going to have to try something else. I might have to see if I can rent one or something, because I'd love to do a, a full-on review with Kiara or something with that Sigma 135 and the Sigma 105. Um, I'll have to see where I can get my hands on some. Um did you get to use a 400 millimeter? No, I didn't, Casper, but I, I picked it up and felt it and everything. Uh, I might have to see if I can get Mark um, Galler and see if we can do a shoot together and then I can do a model. I'd love to do a model shoot with it and I said that to him laughing, but I'd love to give it a go. Um, so I should see if I can get that. Mark's got the only one in Australia, so they're very hard to get here at the moment, very hard, but I should message Mark and see if I can organize something. But I just wanted to pretend it was mine for a thing. It's amazing. Actually, it's quite light considering how big that lens is. I think you almost could hand hold it for a while. It was interesting. Um, so Kevin, I'll let you know if I can get my hand on one. I really would love to. Mark says, hello, Dave and all. Richard said hello from Tobago and Trinidad. The, the Essential Light says 9.30 a.m. in Texas. Mike said, 
Oh, I've got a donation already. Oh, thank you so much, Van. I really appreciate that. Um, he's, Van said, thanks for uh, being so helpful for people like me. Great channel. Thank you so much. Um, Mark said, hello. Richard said, oh, I've already done that one. Mike said, hi all. Hi, Hi, all. Hi, David. Sorry, I've got to go to bed. 4 a.m. here. <laughs> Need some sleep. You can watch it in the morning, Mike. Uh, the panda said, hello, everyone. Trevor said, I like your new portrait lens. <laughs> oh, it was a classic. I couldn't believe the size of that thing. It's so funny. Gerald says, hi. Um, Rad says, hello, everyone. Oh, someone's at the door. I'm just going to ignore it. Um, JP said, hello, David from Boston. I think they're picking up a delivery, actually. Um, if they ring a couple of times, I'll go out there. David said, good evening from, is it Sequin, Washington? Um, Mike says, yeah, crack a Coke, stubby. <laughs> David, a much better looking Gordon Lang. Oh, you guys crack me up. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Martin says, hello from the Philippines. Francis says, hello, David from Vancouver. The Panda says, hello from um, Trento, New Jersey. I'm traveling, uh, so stopping by. Uh, Rick says, greetings from Tassie. So Rick's a local boy. Uh, well, fairly local to me. Casper, wow, only one four hundred. Yep, there's only one apparently here. Um, Mickey Blue Eyes says, remember, thumbs up, guys. I oh, thank you so much for saying that, Ricky, Mickey. Uh, David says, uh, by the by, my G9 arrives tomorrow. You're going to love that camera. That's great, great camera. Sue said, trying to decide on a macro lens, have an A7 III. Need something that won't break the bank. Do what I do, Sue. Uh, well, let us know what you shoot, because if you're shooting close... Have a look at the video I just posted the other day. I'll shoot a wedding video part two. Uh, I'm using that um, 3.5 macro, the APS-C uh, lens, and it works fantastic. It depends on what you're actually shooting. There's also the 70 mil Sigma, which is also not really expensive, which is a great lens as well. Uh, Gerald uses that in here uh, as well. Uh, and he really swears by it, so that's another one you could buy too. If you don't, if you want to shoot insects and things like that, you need like a 70 or a 90, or even a 105. If you're shooting, just say rings and details and things like that, where it doesn't matter if you're close, I use that APS-C, the Sony one, uh, and that's fantastic. Um, Josh said, uh, what was the Facebook group again? It's the Photography Videography School. I'll bring it up again for you. Um, it's actually here. If you search for, if you search for this, I'll show you. Um, if you search for photography and videography school, it's this that you actually have to search for. So it's photography and videography school. Uh, you'll be able to find it. And like I said, that's a site made by me for you guys. So. Um, I've got no restrictions on there apart from you just can't go live to it. Everything else, you can share your videos, you can share your Instagram feeds, everything else. Uh, so please do that. By the way, guys, I have had stacks of people add me on Instagram. Uh, just let me hide this for a minute. Um, I've had a stack of people add me on Instagram, and I have immediately added them back. I'm going to put my Instagram user here. And guys, give each other some love. You know, it, it's Instagram is the main way I get work now. I get far more work from Instagram than I do on anything else. So really start to push your Instagram feeds. Um, so I've put mine on. If you like me on Instagram, I will, I promise, like you back. The only thing I say to people, if you like me back and then you unfollow me, which, I don't know, drives me nuts. I've got an app which I use, and I'll tell you which one it is. It's actually, um, it's actually called Followers. So it's this one here. Oh, let me see if it'll actually come up. So it's called followers, and what that does, it tells you people who have followed you and unfollowed you, uh, who have followed and then unfollowed you. So I then just unfollow them directly in this app, and it's actually called uh, followers, uh, F-O-L-L-O-W-E-R-S, and you put in your Instagram username, and then you can immediately uh, unfollow them back because there's so many wankers out there, honestly. They'll follow you just to hopefully that you'll follow them back and then they dump you again. It's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, follow me if you can on Instagram and I promise you I'll follow you back. Uh, Sizzle Man says, looks like Southern California is being represented well tonight. Trevor says, uh, David Osler, with all the new camera introductions, what full-frame camera will sell the most over this holiday season? I have no idea. I'm going to talk about a couple that Tony Northrup uh, reviewed just before, actually. I still think the a7 III is going to be the best-selling camera until Sony announced something else. 
Uh, I think nothing's going to match the A7S III. On the APS-C side, Fuji, I think, is going to sell really well, um, the, the X-T3, um, because I do think that's probably, that is the best APS-C camera out there now. But I, th I think particularly full frame, uh, the uh, A7S III will be the best full frame camera, that's for sure. Sue said, want to work, do real close work, uh, flower bugs, water droplets is what I'm, the yeah. air. So if you want to do that sort of stuff, uh, and you don't want to spend too much, you might want to have a look at the Sigma 70 mil. Um, oh, Rick Rat, thank you so much. Uh, hi, greetings from Alaska. Love your channel and your usually long live streams. <laughs> I know they are always long. I can't go past an hour today, though, because I've got to get ready for this uh, shoot tonight that I'm doing. I'm doing a great concert tonight, um, photography, so it's going to be fantastic. Um, so, yeah, look at the 70 mil uh, Sigma Sue. Um, Creative Film said, uh, I'll shake the light. Gerald said, Sue, um, yes, love the new Sigma Art 72.8 macro. There you go, Sue. You're in the um, photography videography school as well, aren't you? Have a look through there because Gerald did post some images from that. And if you're interested, um, he might be able to repost a couple on there so you can have a look at it. Um, Sam said, hi, David. I'm thinking about buying the Sony A6500 because it dropped a little bit in price. Do you, uh, do you think I have to wait to see the new Sony APS-C is going to be? Well, Sam, I wouldn't be purchasing it unless you really have a need for it. They could drop the A7000 any time, uh, or A9000, whatever they're going to call it. They could actually drop that any time now, so I would wait unless you really desperately need it. If you desperately need it, uh, I would jump in and get one. But uh, if you don't, just wait. It might be worthwhile waiting. If you buy that and then a week later the A7000 is released, really, you're gonna kick yourself. So I think it might be worth waiting. It just depends on how much of a need you have for that camera. Uh, Mark says, I, I, I have the 50 uh, 2.8 FE Sony for sale. There you go, Mark's selling my lens there. Um, Rick Ratz said, hi, greetings from Alaska. Love oh, I've already said that, love your channels. Uh, Panda said, X-T3, this Xmas. Um, Sizzle Man said, waiting patiently for the A7000, aren't we all? Uh, Don says, how do you think the A7S will be priced? Well, I think it's probably going to be around the A7R3's price, Don. I, I wouldn't think it would be much more than that, but we have to wait and see, and depending on what technology they put in that camera, but I think it will be around the A7R3 price. I don't think they price it at the original A9 price. I hope not anyway. The Panda says, no A7000 this year. I hope they do, Panda. Uh, what else? Um, Trev says uh, the 100-ish macro lens, um, Tokina does one um, as well. Um, the Nikon Z forum on DP review is overrun by confirmation bias. Anything said to be negative about the Z cameras is also automatically met with derision. Really interesting. That's that's interesting. All right, guys, we better move over because then I'll open up some questions a little bit later. Because, uh, like I said, I have to be gone out of here by. 2.30, even a fraction earlier. Um, so I want to bring up a couple of stories because I wanted to talk to you about, oh, before we do, let me just, I wanted to quickly discuss this with you because I did a wedding on Saturday and I wanted to sort of mention to you the interesting thing about this. Um, I'm talking about brides and things like that. Oh, by the way, if you if you haven't watched my wedding uh, videography, and it, it sort of surprises me because um, I think I posted that um, a couple of days ago. Let me just bring this up because I wanted to talk to you about it, because it's really interesting. YouTube. And I'm gonna go to Creator Studio. And let me go to this, my channel. Now I wanted to talk to you about this because um, I've posted a couple of videos about the weddings that I've shot and I'm showing behind the scenes of, of how I actually shoot uh, the weddings. Um, but it's interesting to see what, what's actually happening because the, the views on that, when we're looking at it, I've posted that around 24 hours ago and it's, it's, it's only had about 712 views, whereas my normal views are, are getting around about well, normally these live views or whatever will get three to 4,000 views sometimes. So it's interesting to see that the actual 
side of showing the photography side of things uh, doesn't do anywhere near the amount that I do uh, or get with um, shooting things like uh, or talking about the hardware and doing these sort of shoots to you as well. And the interesting thing to you as well, uh, it, it can also hurt your profile on YouTube because if you post things that don't um, rate very well or get many views, it actually affects your analytics. Now, I'm not talking about the money side of things. It actually affects what YouTube will recommend other people to watch, which can affect your growth. So it's interesting to know what's going on there. And I'd love to know your opinion, guys, and please answer them down below, honestly. Um, because I'd love to know whether you think I'm wasting my time posting videos like that of behind the scenes type of work, of live shoots and doing that sort of thing, which are getting so little views, uh, or should I concentrate more on, on going more over about the news and things like that. So I'd love to know what you think about what's going on that, because like I said to you, I've only had 700 views on that, and I thought that was really relevant. If you were thinking about getting into wedding photography, uh, it, it I would have thought it would have been a great thing for people to actually have a look at and see the behind the scenes of how it works because th these were actually paid shoots. When I say paid, it's a full on paid wedding. I'm not getting, I'm not hiring a uh, bride, a fake bride and all that sort of stuff which is what a lot of uh, YouTubers will tend to do. This was a real behind the scenes look at how weddings are shot and I'm gonna post it over a number of weeks but it's had that little views. I wonder whether I'm wasting my time. So I'd love, to, I'd love you to give me your, your opinion about that um, honestly, whether you think it's just not worth it or whatever. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments down below too if you're watching this later on because I'd love to know uh, what you think about it as well. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you this wedding video, that not wedding video, but I'm going to show you this wedding that I did yesterday because I wanted to quickly talk to you about uh, this bride. Um, it was interesting because she was gorgeous, Stephanie. She really was, but the weather was terrible uh, in Melbourne on Saturday for this. And I wanted to mention to you that how you have to be always positive to uh, a bride because she was a little bit nervous about obviously getting wet because it was very, uh, the weather was just coming in on and off really badly. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about how you've got to stay positive for the bride the whole time. And I deliberately go a little bit more happier if, if, if it's like that than, than sort of being, oh, I'm a little bit worried about it. I would never ever show... Um, the bride at all that I'm worried about anything, the weather or whatever, uh, a bit of gear failing or whatever. Um, and I actually took these images and, and I said to her, don't worry, I said, this lighting is the best lighting that you can ever have. We just have to sort of manipulate it and go between the showers. A couple of times we did actually uh, get a shot in the showers as well. But it's interesting to sort of show and, and what I'll do is I'll take a shot and then I'll run over and actually show her and, the, and she'll look at the back and she'll go, oh, that was beautiful. But um, so, you know, this was an image that I took yesterday. I also wanted to show uh, that I'm using the 16 to 35 f4 here. So I'm, I'm again showing you that I do use different lenses uh, and I am pulling out different ones all the time. And I love environmental ones like this. I find these are the best type of images that you can actually get where if they're going to blow this up very large and do a big poster out of it, you'll never get sick of looking at this because it's more environmental. If the bride and groom are full on and massive on this image, it can end up being look uh, looking a little bit dated and stale. But if, it, if it's more environmental, uh, it'll look like a piece of art forever. So I often do shoot like this. And this was all in natural light. No flash was used here at all. Um, and once again, I'm always exposing for the highlights on the dress. And then I immediately grabbed the 16 to five and that was on the A7R um, two. And then I then grabbed the A7, uh, the A9, and I used the 70 to 200 f4. And this is why I'm saying to you guys, you don't have to use really expensive lenses to get um, beautiful images. So this is the 70 to 200 f4 model. So I'm giving two perspectives basically of the same spot. Uh, I'm using the widescreen to get a massive shot of everything overall, which is environmental. And then I'm just grabbing my second camera, which is the A9, and I'm using the uh, 70 to 200 f4 on this. And you can see how beautiful they are, and there's two different looks that I'm getting straight away. Again, if you look here, I'm grabbing the 16 to 35 as well. And I love candid moments. Now, yes, you can't really see the groom here that well because he does blend into that background a little bit. But you know what, I'm not worried about that because I'm more worried, I've got stacks of other of these as well where they're kissing and doing other things. 
for me, it's just about more capturing the moment that, that, that is there. I love the reflection in the water and they're just part of the environment. And this is why I'm saying you've got to think about using the environment when you're shooting. I think too many photographers are just making it like a portrait session and, and just going in very close rather than thinking about the whole environment around them. Um, Again, we had to work very quick. It was windy like crazy here, and I had to try and be very positive with the bride as well. I'm using the 70 to 200 uh, here as well on the A9, and I'm just taking a couple of pics with them walking. And even though it was really awful conditions, you can still see that they're having a good time. And, and this is the thing that I'll always try and do. Uh, it then started raining really heavy, and you can see here that I stood out in the rain. I, I didn't let them know that I was worried about it. This was with the A7 III and it had the 28 to 75. Again, I'm not gonna worry about the weather sealing in this case, the camera got really wet. Uh, I just dried it off when we got back under umbrellas. But again, I took the shot. And this is the thing, for me, I showed them that I wasn't worried about anything that was going on, and I just took the shot. Uh, you know, and I had to work very, very quickly, uh, but I'm happy with that. That's the only shot we could get there. We intended to do stacks of shooting around that area, but it poured down immediately after that, so we had to move on. And then I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just go into the um, reception, and then I captured an image like this, which I just adore. Um, let me just make this a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, I just adore this image, it's just beautiful. And again, I use the Profoto B10 uh, on, uh, I use the um, LCD light though this time, not the flash, because I wanted to match the ambient exposure with the, uh, with the uh, light that I was grabbing with the flash too, and I've used that because I wanted to get her sitting directly underneath um, that uh, light, and I, I just adore that, and she loved it. Uh, and it is a bit moody, but again, that's often how I like to shoot. I do like to shoot very moody, and I really like that image. I think it's just beautiful. Uh, uh, and, you know, I just I just think it's fantastic. Um, any, Sizzleman said, any problems with Sony's weather sealing during the wedding shoot? Nope, I never worry about it, Sizzleman. The cameras are way better than what most people give you credit for. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm a paid professional, and I'm paid to be there for that wedding. I'm not going to not shoot. And I've never had a camera that's failed, so, yep. Um, anyway, so that's the, the images that I took yesterday. So now we'll go over and look at, I'm going to come back to the chat in a minute, but um, because like I said, please uh, let me know what you think about that behind the scenes wedding video. If you haven't looked at it, have a look at it and think. tell me if you think it's useful. Uh, I have still got the bride's makeup to do, the formal shots has to be done, the wedding has to be done, so there's way more than what I've showed you yet. But I really have to work out whether it's actually worthwhile me doing it, because it does take an awful lot of time to produce that. Uh, it took me a day to put that together. Anyway, let's get back to the news um, because I wanted to talk about this. Um, Tony Northrup has put a video, this is on Sony Alpha Rumours. Tony Northrup has put on a video uh, talking about that he, he has uh, looked at the Canon EOS R and the Nikon um, Z camera against this A7 and the A9. And he said, actually, the A7 the, and all the A7 cameras, they're the new ones, so I would take it, the A7 uh, R3 and the A7 R2 and the A9. Uh, all better at sports than what the Canon EOS R and the Nikon Z is. So that's really interesting. Uh, and from what I've seen in all the reviews as well, the Sony is still by far the best focusing camera that there is out there. And like I've said to you before, um, nothing comes close to the A9. And the interesting thing now is, if you are really looking out for say getting into something like these uh, sports or wildlife and things like that. The A9 has dropped substantially. It's now getting to the point, I know there's still a difference in money, but you would now have to start to make a decision about whether you would go for an A7 III or an A9 because they are becoming closer and closer over that period of time. I spoke with Mark Galler about it yesterday uh, on Saturday. And we both had that same thought that the A9, when you think about it, that I think I paid $7,000 Australian when that came out. Uh, you could buy it the other day here for $4,600, I think it was. Now, yes, that's still a lot of money, but if you're into that market of wanting to do, say, sports or, um, or uh, wildlife, you know, with capturing birds in flight and things like that, the A9 is becoming a very affordable camera now. If you compare that camera to, say, something like a D4, a D... Uh, five or you know one of the the high end Canon, um, it really is a good camera for the money, and and that's that's basically I'm not going to go through that video much because like I said I haven't got very much time today because I've got to get ready for this concert tonight, but um, it, it's interesting to see 
Well, Cameron, now I think putting the A9 against the EOS R and the Nikon Z is, is probably not fair at all, but uh, the A7 III and the A7 R III, it's a definite comparison. So, you know, it, it's really interesting that the Sony, even though they're older cameras, are still way ahead of the competition. So have a look at that video and let me know about what you think about that below. I'd be really curious to know. But I still think the A9 is leagues ahead of anything else that's out there. Every time I use that camera, it just blows me away. Uh, I was using silent shutter on the weekend uh, on that wedding, uh, and it was just amazing. I, I was using the continuous focus, tracking the bride and everything like that, and it was amazing. Um, you know, and it really is just beautiful to use. The extra dials on the top, the controls, uh, it, it's, there's just nothing like it. It really is, and to not be wearing out your shutter is another really big thing because when you put it on silent shutter, there's no wear and tear on that camera. Even though that camera's rated for 500,000 users or something on the mechanical shutter, there's no wear and tear at all when you're basically dealing with the electronic shutter. So that's another thing that you have to consider as well. And it still is my A camera. The A7 III is my B camera, and the A7R2 is my C camera that I will grab out for details like I showed you before. If I'm going to shoot something like this, um, I mean, that was shot with the a7 III, but if I'm going to shoot something like this or this, I'm going to use the a7 III, uh, a7R2 because I want the resolution. When I enlarge that, I want to know that I'm going to, if I zoom this up, it'll probably look terrible but on YouTube, but I want to know that I'm going to have enough uh, pixels to, to print this up really large and still have resolution when I'm going to actually... Um, you know, blow this up. So that, that's the thing that I'm after with the A7R2. Um, and that's where I'll grab that out, is to grab that resolution that you can't beat. And this is why I'm saying there's multiple cameras for multiple purposes. If I did the A7 III there or the A A9, I wouldn't be able to get the detail if I wanted to blow that up into a large print. So there is still uses for all the cameras. So I'm gonna quickly come over to the chat just to talk about if anyone's watched that and see what they think about it. Also to discuss what you think about my winning video. I put up. G'day Dion, how are you? Good to see you on here. Um, Trevor Pitt said, I've never had any problems with Sony Alpha in the rain. Neither have I. I've even used them under waterfalls and they've got qu quite wet. Um, Chris said, Watched your, watch and enjoyed your videos on the weddings. Always enjoy your behind the scenes. Thank you, Chris. Joel said, I've also never had a Sony camera fail in bad weather. I haven't either. I think that's ridiculous what these people are actually saying when they say about that. Yes, enjoyed the cowgirl wedding. She's just beautiful, um, Hannah. Um, behind the scenes videos are my favorite to watch. Uh, you do a fantastic job of them as well, David. Thank you so much. Uh, Jason said, keep uploading them. They are very useful reference uh, video for new photographers looking to break into weddings. Well, I certainly hope they get more views than what they've been getting, Jason. That That's the thing. Like I said, it's been up, you know, like I said, 24 hours, and it's only had 700 views, which is pretty poor. Mark said, I'm trying to get a foothold into YouTube right now. I'm finding content seems less important. The cinematic dramas, uh, drama, etc., gets all the following. Peter Mac does it, but just look at the stuff that's trending. I know it, it's, yeah, it's, it really is interesting to see what really gets well, uh, you know, gets big views out there. Check out Kai's review of the ESR. Hilarious. Yeah, I must watch that, actually. I haven't watched that yet. Uh, creative films. Um, Mark said, just seen, oh, hang on, I better just come back through here. Uh, Ray said, uh, Irmish is saying, hi, Ray said, I really like your photos. Your behind the scene video shows me how you lie to the scene. That's something I really like. The other thing too, the other day when I checked the ice lights, they were $100 off in B&H. So if you look at my link on there, I'm hoping there's still $100 off, but that was a really good buy if you were interested in getting the ice lights. Um, I really like your photos. Uh, oh, I just did that. DR said, I sold my A9 for a Fuji X-T2 and an X-T3. I'd never sell my A9. Not unless another A92 came out. Uh, just seen a second A9 for 4,000. That's what I'm saying. They're getting more and more reasonable, Mark. They really are. Casper uh, said, A9 is the best degree. I, I love it. I love the A9. Um, A9 for video is not good. You're kidding me. That's the best video camera I think Sony's got. I use that all the time. It's the only camera that is that is around full frame that you can use in full frame. All others have to be shot in APS-C mode. DR, I don't think you're right with that statement. Um, if Sony would put S-Log into that camera, A9, um, it would reach such a boost for it. Yeah, I don't use A-Log though, Trevor. I just use standard profile. 
Uh, Mapphone A9 video is amazing. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, Ray said, for me, for myself, the A9 is the best. Um, Casper said, A9 video is fantastic. I agree, it is. It's amazing. Um, Mapfan said, the A9 video looks great. Uh, you're too hung up on specs. Like I said, I think the A9 is the best video I've got. It just hasn't got the log profiles. But like I said, for me, I don't shoot it. You look at my videos I've done of Kiara, like the one with the waterfall and her walking through the Werribee Manor and tell me that video isn't beautiful. And that was shot with, um, one of those was shot with the A9. I can't remember which one it was. Some were the A7, I can't remember. Um, oh no, they were the A7 III, I think. Uh, but I do use the A9 quite a lot in video and it, it never lets me down. Um, Love the behind the series. Creative Film says, uh, I can't deal with the battery life on the Fujis. That's, yeah, I know, one of the problems. Sony is still the best around, I agree, Jason. Um, Gerald said, watched the Tony Northrup video and was not surprised the Sony's fared so well against the competition. Make comment above about the wedding videos. Okay, it got past. Cheers. Oh, did you? Well, Gerald, where did you ever say that? Uh, sometimes I miss them. I don't know. Sorry, Gerald, I must have missed it. Um, DR said, and photo and videos don't take too well to color grading when I compare to Aria, Canon, and Fuji, but I like shooting Sony cameras for black and white. Wow, I've never had a problem with color. Um, no other camera can handle pro wedding sports photography and video so well. I agree with you, Jason. Casper um, said, um, I don't have a problem with A9 4K video, neither do I. Creative Film says, uh, bicolor two foot battery tube is better and brighter than the ice light. Yeah, I haven't looked at that um, at all, so I wouldn't know. Um, so sad, my Tamron 28 to 75, 2.8 does not do 20 frames per second. Yeah, I think it's it's 15, I think, isn't it, that it does the same as my Sony uh, 70 to 200. But that's enough for me. Uh, but you're right. All right, so let's continue. So that's the first story that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, the second story I wanted to talk about was the Sigma CEO is talking about that the first full frame design lenses for mirrorless will arrive in 219. So he's not talking about the lenses uh, like what are out now where they've basically welded the adapter on. He's talking about designing lenses for, for mirrorless, full frame mirrorless in 219. So they're talking about that they should be fully designed, not just had that adapter uh, welded on. Um, and I think he's saying in here, I'm not going to read all of these because like I said, I just don't have time today, but he's actually saying in here that um, they're going to have full frame mirrorless lenses next year and uh, Sony Alpha rumors are saying they're 99% certain these lenses will be available for both L mount and E mount. Uh, these new lenses will be smaller but not much. Now what he's saying, he's saying that he isn't too worried about lens size, he's more worried about quality. And the Art Series lenses have always been amazing quality. I used them when I had Nikon. Uh, I used the 85 1.4 and that was a beautiful lens. Uh, it really was. So, you know, it, it's, or is it the 30, I think I had the 35 1.4 actually. Um, but they were really beautiful. Uh, but he's basically saying in there that he's not too worried about size at all. He's more worried about the quality of the lenses. He also says making tilt shift lenses for mirrorless cameras is not a priority. And this is why I'm saying it really doesn't matter what lens you use on mirrorless cameras, uh, on Sony for instance, because they're all manual focus. And I've said this to people before, you don't need Sony to produce a tilt shift lens. I would go and buy what Nikon have or what Canon have. It doesn't matter that you're using an adapter because they're all manual focus. So don't stress if you're dealing with using a tilt shift lens that it's not a native lens. It, it completely doesn't matter at all. So I, I totally understand why Sigma have said they're not worried about um, uh, having a tilt shift lens for mirrorless. Uh, and that's about really all that I wanted to talk about. Oh, oh, the only thing I wanted to talk about on that was he also said that he predicts that we will see more mirrorless sales and digital, digital SLRs in about three years. So he's predicting more mirrorless and, than uh, DSLRs in three years. Uh, but he said they'll probably have more digital SLR lenses around for a while longer due to the fact that they've had so many. I'm not sure if that may be the case. I, I think a lot of people, once mirrorless really take off, may start to dump their digital SLRs. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in that marketplace. Uh, but 
I, I think clearly he's right that there will be more mirrorless sales than DSLRs uh, within three years. And I think it might even be sooner than that um, in the full frame market. So it, it's interesting anyway. So let's open it up to the chat because I'm going to give you around 15 minutes or so if you want time on this and we can have a chat uh, with Q&A. Oh, no, there's one more story. I wanted to show you this because I thought this was hilarious. I wanted to talk to you about this. I noticed on Irene, Irene's amazing. She's a, a really amazing photographer. I really admire Irene, and I love her um, approach to photography and how laid back she is. Uh, she's really good to watch. So I recommend if you don't um, subscribe to her, uh, subscribe to Irene, she's fantastic. Um, but she showed this funny thing, and, and it is actually how I thought too. I get all the time people asking me to do I do they want to do my retouching and I get it all the time and this is the thing sometimes it does my head in but I noticed even I you even get emails about high-end uh, editing of your work as well and I wanted to talk to you about this because I'm not even completely sure that it's it's and I'm probably going to upset some people here but I don't think it's ethical in a way because I think your retouching is your style now for me, this is exactly like saying, and, and, and let me put this to you, this would be like someone hiring me as an artist, I then go and hire another artist to paint it, they do all the painting, they bring that art back to me, I then hand it to you and I say that's my work. Now that to me is exactly what's happening when you outsource your retouching, uh, particularly if you're doing high-end retouching, I, I believe that's actually what's happening. It's no longer your work, it's no longer your style. And I really think it's 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 almost bordering on false advertising, and I think it's unethical. But but that's me. My the way I work, everything for me is about my art. Everything for me is about my style. And there's no way I'm going to let that go and let someone else edit that. I think it's probably okay, borderline okay if you send it out and then you're getting someone to do the minor edits to the work. But the second you're actually doing your high end retouching and changing things where it becomes arty. Uh, I think you should be doing it yourself. This is why I will only do one wedding per weekend because I will never, ever work so much that I have to send out that work to someone else. And that's the way that I feel. Because remember, and this is what I say to my brides and everything, I say to me it's about art. I don't want to be just a wedding photographer. I want to be an artist. So for me, it's very important that it's my style that's getting done. If I let that go, it's no longer my work, and I, I just can't do that. I just can't ethically do that. And it's like I said, would you hand out another artist to get uh, a painting for you that you've been paid to do? And I don't think that's right either. But look, going back to this, it's really funny because um, – Irene did this thing where she she used three of them. She used a 25 cent one. Obviously, they're always done overseas somewhere. There's a $5 version and a $10 version. Um, and I'll put the link to this down below so you can have a look. But that was Irene's original file. You can see that she's shot it deliberately knowing how she's going to edit it later. And I'll show you. It's it's cool. But she's told the retoucher what she wanted to do. Uh, and she, want, she told them that she said uh, she would like... Um, it to be made that very vibrant and warm, clean, bright skins, uh, skin, bright eyes, and make her hair look more red so it matches the background. Now remember, she shoots daylight here. There's no flash work and everything being involved. So she's shooting with the exposure, knowing what she's going to do with it in post. Anyway, she let it go, and this was the 25, this was a 25 cent one. <laughs> oh, it's a, I can't believe it. Well, you look at the original. And then this is the 25 cent one. This is how it's come back. Um, and then it shows the original is against the retouch one. And please go and watch Irene talk about this on a YouTube channel. The $5 retouching one is this one. Uh, and you can see the result that they've got there. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit better than the, the 25 cent one. And then the, <laughs> the $10 one is this. Uh, again, I, this thing, I think all of them look terrible, like awful. Um, you can see it here, what they've done. Well, they have warmed it up and everything, but it just looks so harsh and horrible. And then Irene does her edit, which is typically beautiful. And you can see here how beautiful it actually is. If you look at the comparison there between her original one and then her edited one, you can see the thought that she had in mind uh, later on to bring the colours back and everything else. And I just thought it's... It's hilarious if you look at what's been happening. So have a look at that video. Like I said, I'll leave it in the link below. Uh, but have a look at that video because I thought that was a classic. 
All right, so let's open it up to questions. Um, now, Creative Film says the Quasar Bicolor two foot battery tube is better and brighter than the Ice Light. Uh, I'd have to see how soft it is, though, Creative Films. That the one advantage with the Ice Light is it's that diffusion panel that's over the top of it. It is really diffused. You can't see the lights inside. A lot of the other lights, you can see the actual LED lights inside it, and therefore it does always give you a harder light, and that's what I don't like about those other ones. Um, don't know how long I can wait for a new APS-C. Uh, the X-T3 is looking mighty good. Yes, I agree, it does look mighty good. Uh, the A9 is a beast, I agree with you. Um, a9 is $3,998 at Adorama. See, that's a great buy at the moment for that camera, Gary. It really is. Like I said, it's come down so much. It's still a lot of money, but you're getting an awful lot of technology for that, that price. If you think what you're getting there and then price the D4S, uh, the D5, I mean. Um, where were we? Because it's just jumped down. Gerald said, I thank you for the live shoots and tutorials. Folks will learn so much more watching and learning from a pro, pro like yourself. This is an incredible free resource for folks. Don't stop. Thanks, Gerald. Like I said, it's just hard to justify the time if, uh, for the views that I'm actually getting. Uh, I'm going to keep doing them, but it is. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what people say. Um, Creative Film says, two different cameras, A7S III coming in 219. Yeah, it will be 219. Hopefully the first quarter it will be announced. Uh, no word on the new Canon and Nikon mirrorless mounts. No, not yet. Um, Bob said, we need the Tamron Holy Grail series of lenses to come out. Uh, I should just buy the 70 to 200, so they'll release one a few days later. I'd love a 70 to 200 uh, f2.8 by uh, Tamron, also a 16 to 35 or something around that. If it's similar to what the um, Tamron is, the 28 to 75, uh, yeah, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Sony a7 III for video is fantastic. Does the a7 III crop 4K video for 120 frames per second? I can't remember, someone else might be able to tell me. I think there's a, I don't know, I can't remember. Someone else might remember me. I don't do 120, I only do 60 and there isn't a crop. Uh, so I don't know about 120. Um, Creative Films only at 4K 30. Oh, okay, well there you go. So it's only, it's only cropping in at 4K 30 frames. Uh, per second, so there's no uh, crop at 120. Um, Gerald says, I kept my Canon 70 f4 tilt shift lens with the MC11 adapter, and it works fine, exactly, Gerald. And that's what I'm saying. You certainly you can buy a Canon, you can buy whatever for tilt shift. Um, I want to see a wide zoom for Sony from the Sigma or Tamron. I don't like the price and selection of Sony wide angle lenses. Um, Okay, so full frame at 24 frames per second. Yes, it does. The, the A9 will give you uh, 24 frames per second at 4K on full frame. Um, what else have we got? Stacy says, I certainly need my Aussie Alpha fix from David every week. Thank you for posting. I just watched the behind the scenes and loved it. Oh, thank you so much, Stacy. Casper said, agreed. Uh, Yeti said, completely agree, David, it, it is your style. I know that's the problem, and I just don't know how people can let that go. Um, I really don't. Um, Johnson City said, that's the new Twilight preset. <laughs> um, your retouching style is your style, totally agree. Yep, I agree it is, that's the thing. Irene said she looked like Lady Shrek. She does in that first one, it's a classic. Um Don says, is that a corpse? I know it does look like a corpse. <laughs> oh, um, they're probably in sweatshops over there. That's the problem, the poor people. You know, they're probably paying 25 cents and they might get a cent from it or something. It's, it's awful. Um, which APS-C lenses would you like Sony Sigma to release first? Well, I'm not fussed. I'm, I'm not really, and you're probably not going to like this answer, but I'm not fussed about any APS-C lenses at all. I'm only interested in buying full frame. Because I use full frame lenses on the APS-C side, I like to buy full frame so I've got APS-C and the full frame covered. That's the way that I'm now working. So I don't think I'll buy any APS-C uh, lenses again. I've got a few of them. I've got the 24 uh, 1.8, which is what I'm using now, which I do love. Um, I've got the 10 to uh, the 10 to 18 f4, which I like for its wide. 
Um, I've also got the 18 to 105, which I like as well. But I don't think I'd buy any more APS-C lenses. I think I'd be just buying full frame lenses and then putting them on the A6500. So I can't really answer that for you because I'm not interested in any, to be honest. Um, Trev said, the first thing you should start working on is your understanding of how to edit color stills and video. Not enough people really master it and, and it will set you apart. Totally agree. Um, Creative Film said, very soft. I'm not sure what that was. Um, Phantom Rocker said, hi David. Um, Too Smart says, bit the bullet and bought the A7 III plus Tamron Comra. You can't go wrong with that Too, uh, too Smart at all. Keep second system until affordable 70 to 200 comes out. Yep. Gerald said, the Godox version of Lightstick is fairly soft, uh, has a diffusion panel and separate sides for daylight and tungsten colour temps, remote control and more. Yeah, I'll have to give it a go one day, Gerald. Um, I can't say it's not good or as good as the Ice Light because I haven't used it, so I can only talk about what I've got. Um, Daniel said, I read somewhere that Canon and Nikon are not opening up the specs to third-party manufacturers. I read that somewhere too, which is stupid. I really cannot believe they do that. They're shooting themselves in the foot. That is nuts. I really think that's a backward um, thing. Um, Daniel said, oh, I hate that. Where are we? View, actual size. Um, Daniel said, in terms of the Z and R mounts, it looks like third parties will have to re reverse engineer. Yeah, and then they never work as well. That's a problem. Blaze King said, full frame is the way to go. That is why Fuji um, ain't something. I'm not sure. I agree, full frame is beautiful. There's a certain look about it that I adore, and I agree with that. Um, but the X-T3, you know what, if the X-T3 was the only camera that came out, if that had an articulating screen, uh, I may have bought that for vlogging. But it doesn't have the articulating screen. That's the problem. Uh, and it's got that shocking battery. Uh, Lowell says, want to sell the A7R3 to get an A9, what's a good price to sell, or should I wait and see what gets released next? If you've got the A7R3, oh, I wouldn't, well, it depends, Lowell. It, I don't think I'd be selling it. I, I'd try, if you can, to save up and get uh, uh, another camera later on, because that, what you've got there is an amazing camera, and you probably will lose too much to sell it. Um, you'd have to see what price you can get it. I'm not sure what you get. If you go on eBay or other sites, it should give you a guide of what you'll get for it. Um, and they do hold their value a fair bit. Um, but you'd have to want to... Look, if you want to get into sports and things like that, I can understand it, or wildlife. I can understand that you'd want to uh, jump over to the A9. Uh, but think about the reason why you sell it and what type of stuff do you actually want to uh, shoot. Uh, and then we might be able to give you a better idea. Um, Gerald says, if you were, if you were me, uh, I would wait until the A7S III or next gen A9 to have that stack sensor, 4K 60p and 20 frames per second. The one thirty-two thousandth of a second uh, or bite and get a good used A9 now. I know, look, I can't uh, underestimate or tell you how much that one thirty-two thousandth of a second means to me. It really is a game changer if you're shooting in available light and you want to shoot wide open. To have that is unbelievable. Remember all the other cameras, you're, you're stuck at one eight thousandth. Um, it really is beautiful to say shoot with the 85 1.8 wide open on a bright sunny day and be able to uh, shoot at one thirty two thousandth of a second. The A9 is the only one that will give you that and I really do love it. Only one at full frame. Um, Quasi, uh, tube, uh, YouTube's very soft. Yeah, I know it is. There's nothing I can do about it. It looks fantastic on my monitor. Whenever I put it on the screen, I can see it. It just softens everything off. Um, from a consumer's perspective, would you recommend an A6500 or an A7 II? I wouldn't buy an A7 II at all. Um, if I had to buy one of those two cameras, I'd probably get the A6500. But I would wait and get an A7 III. I'd, I'd keep saving until you can get an A7 III. Um, because it's just so much of a better camera. That, that's the thing. You could also wait a little bit longer and see if an A7000 is announced and then the A6500 will drop way down on that. But if you're comparing those two cameras, I think the A6500 is a much better camera than the A7 II. The only thing is you're losing the full frame, but you're getting much, much better focus, way better focus than what you're getting on the A7 II. Um, would you suggest... What would you suggest for shooting raw, compressed or uncompressed? I always shoot compressed raw. I cannot tell 
any difference at all. So I never ever shoot uncompressed raw. I've never ever had a need for it. I've never seen the compression artifacts, uh, things like that. So I, I just always shoot compressed. Um, the A9 should be out pretty soon. I'm not sure. I think it may, I, don't, I wouldn't expect to see it even till late next year, probably. I think that camera's gonna be announced for the next Olympics, so it probably might be the year after. I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see an A9 II next year at all. Um, no, oh my God, not YouTube. Uh, like Quasar, Quasar Tube, laugh out loud. I'm not sure what that means. Um, so are there are other questions before we call it a day, guys. Um, I'll keep going for a few more minutes. Uh, just hang on for a second. I just wanna change the battery over. It's charging. Um, Ivan says Sigma 24 1.4 e-mount, more versatile than the Sigma 35 1.4 for video and pictures on the A7 III, given lossless video for using Super 35, then additionally clear image zoom, making your Prime 3 lengths. Yeah, I, I haven't used either, well I've used the Sigma 35 1.4 art when I was on Nikon, in my Nikon days, and I did love that lens. Um, but you're saying the 24 is more versatile. I prefer, if if, if that was me, um, and I was only using one of those, even, it depends how you shoot. I'd be shooting, the, I'd buy the 35 1.4, only because I love the 35 focal length all the time and I'd wanna use that full frame. Remember, the second that you go, uh, if you're using the Super 35, well, you're no longer shooting full frame, so that that's an issue with that. I would prefer the 35, but then others tell me they love the 24 focal length. It just depends on, on how you like to shoot. My favorite two focal lengths are the, are the 35 and the 85. They're the two focal lengths that I adore the most. So I'd have a 35 1.4 over a Sigma 24, even, even then when you're saying you can use clear image zoom and things like that. Um, but that's me. I can understand what you're saying, particularly for video as well. I can understand what you're saying there. Uh, do you travel with full frame cameras? If so, what goes in your travel kit? Um, well, I'd take the A9. If, if, if I was traveling and that was what I was taking, I'd take the A9 uh, and that'd be what I'd travel with, definitely. Um, and I, with a lens, that would depend really probably what I wanted to carry. I don't like to carry two big lenses anymore. So probably now, uh, if I was traveling, I'd just take the A9 with the 28 to 75 and that'd be my lenses that I'd take. And that'd probably be all I'd take. Um, Yvonne says, looking for a wider prime than 50 mil and the 85. Yeah, well, like I said, I'd get a 35 if that was me. Um, because that's my favorite focal length, but others like 24, some like 16, but I, I just adore the 24 or the 35, but that's me. But having said that, I might buy the 24 um, new Sony lens to stick on a gimbal for video, so I can understand that. Um, any cameras right now that can shoot 60 frames per second on in 4K? Yes, as well as only the, a, the um, Panasonic GH5, and there's also the uh, new camera, which is obviously the Canon, and I think the Nikon can as well, uh, Z, and also the Fuji X-T3 can as well. Um, I think they're all doing 60 frames per second on 4K. Nothing on the Sony side, though. Um, Fathom Rocker says, David, you are more excited about the A7S III or the next A9, or are you getting both? Well, I'm not sure, and the, the thing is too, I'm not even 100% sure I'm gonna get the A7S III. I can tell you the way I'm going to work, I'm going to wait because I only need one camera. I only need one camera now to, f at the moment, to finish what I'm doing. I'm, I'm missing a video camera. So that's the thing that I'm really missing now. So what I may do is I might wait to see what the A7000 is released and then wait to see what the A7S III is and then make a decision on which one of those two cameras I, I actually buy. Um, so I'm not saying I'll get uh, both of them, and I probably won't, but I'll definitely be getting one of them. Um, and I'm gonna get whichever one suits what I shoot with more. And then over the next year or so, I might sell another camera and then get another one, you know, and, and that's usually what I'll do is I'll update after the tax write-offs, write them off. But at the moment, I definitely don't need both of those because I'm happy with the A7 III and the A9 and the A7R II. 
I'll obviously replace the R2 eventually with the A7, probably the A7R4 would probably, I'll replace the A7R2. Um, but I'm definitely not gonna get both of those cameras. I'm only gonna get one, so I'm gonna see which one works best for me. Um, if you were buying into Sony now, would you choose the A9 or the A7 III? I'd get the A9 if, if it was me though, but that's the way I shoot. I would definitely get the A9, especially seeing it's come down so much. Uh, it's still the best sensor Sony you've got, by far. There's nothing like it. Um, got my new A7 III recently, still going through all its menu items. I have many questions for you next time, though. Meanwhile, I will digest the change from the Nikon D3300 to the Sony A7 III, and you'll love it. You'll actually love it. Uh, Quasar Tube is soft, better than... Oh, okay, I see what you're saying now. The Quasar Tube, okay, is soft, better than the ice lights. Got it now, okay. Um... The 4K bitrate on Sony's is too low. Hope they increase that in the future. I'm sure they will. It is, it's only 100 megabits now. They do have to definitely up that. And that might be a reason for why there's a delay because of the heat it will create. It's gonna be interesting to see. Um, Michael says, hey David, I think your behind the scenes video will grow over time. Uh, it's more specific and is for a smaller group of people. Please don't stop, but I can't, I can thank, uh, but I can think you will get uh, the same views, yeah, and you may be right, that might be something, like I said, I'm always honest with you guys, that might be something that over a period of time they'll keep getting views and keep rating, so it might be something over, you know, uh, uh, coming years that it actually does keep rating well, so I'll just have to see how it goes. See, I want to do a Fusion one as well, guys, I actually want to do a Fusion one of you showing me how I do Fusion, which is videos and stills in a wedding at the same time but I really have to justify the time that it takes to actually do it. Like I said, the last one I put up took me a day to edit, so there's a lot of work involved, you know, and if you're only getting 700 views, I have to work about whether, is it worthwhile, but you know, it might be. I'll see what everyone says in the comments. Um, Gerald said, I switched to compressed raw and have not noticed any apparent difference or artifacts and have saved tons of space. I agree with you, Gerald. Uh, I know you've ordered the 24 for landscapes. Um, and yeah, I, like I said, I may get that too eventually, Gerald, as well. Uh, the Osho says, good day. Um, Mark said, 50 millimeter is my sweet spot. That's what I'm saying, Mark. Everyone has different um, lenses that they love. 35 and 85 is my perfect lenses that I use. I just love the way they look. Um, 24 is not much for me, but I think that would be an amazing lens for video for um, uh, for doing on a gimbal because it's so light and sharp, that lens, and that's probably why I'll get it. Um, Rickat says, let's hope the A7000, A600 is a fully articulating screen. I hope so too, but I'm not holding my breath. Um, Evan says, 150 watching and only 40 likes. Please, guys, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up. It does make a big difference to the people that view my channel. I really would appreciate it, guys. Um, Mikkel says, would you recommend A7R2 in 2018? Probably not really, Mikkel. I still like it, I mean, I still use it, but if I was buying a new one now, I'd get the A7R3, um, or I'd get the A7R2. If you need resolution, I'd be, getting, I'd be saving and getting the A7R3. It's a much better camera than the A7R2. I just haven't upgraded because I'm happy with it, but I will upgrade probably to the A7R4. Um, no says David you are the man thanks for your time and this chat you are a cool mate oh, thanks so much no has says what is the sharpest lens you have ever used on the Sony including manual or older adapted lenses it's the 55 1.8 I find is the sharpest lens I've got um, it really is sharp the Batis 85 2 is pretty close that's very sharp as well very sharp but the 55 I think is the sharpest one I've got I think the 51.4 just beats it though, but I haven't got that. I've got the 55 and I love it for its size. It, it's just so small, but 55 definitely. Um, Blaze King says, agree with uh, Ho, uh, no. David Rocks, thank you so much, Blaze King. Gerald says, please let us have the Fusion one at least once. I oh, know no, that's the next one I'll probably do. 55, 1.8, I agree. Um, JG Ryder says, do you think Sony might do an A9 firmware upgrade that would add 4K 60 frames? No, I don't think we're going to see that at all. Uh, I, I don't, can't ever see that. I think the A9 might be the only camera Sony releases the Animal IAF to, though. That's probably the only sensor that will be able to do it in processor. Um, so I think that will be released in firmware. I, I wouldn't be surprised if no other camera gets that. You'll have to upgrade to a new camera. 
Um, uh, what else have we got? The Osho says, I'm new here, learning heaps already. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you for joining us. That and the 85 1.8. Yes, that's also a great lens as well. The 85 1.8 is also very sharp uh, as well. And that might be about it, guys, because like I said, I've got to go and get ready for this uh, concert I'm shooting tonight. We're leaving in around about half an hour, so uh, I have to go soon. Uh, Ray said, Fusion, please. Yes, I'm, I hopefully will do that because I'd love to show you how I uh, do a Fusion video. That would, might be interesting to a lot of people. So, guys, if you can, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, obviously do. Um, stay tuned for a couple more videos this week. Please watch those wedding videos that I've put up and let me know in the comments if you do think they're worthwhile. Uh, I'd love to know your opinions about that as well. Uh, and I'll see you all in the next video in a couple of days or I might post something behind the scenes tomorrow or whatever. And I'll catch you, oops, I'll catch you all soon guys. Bye for now.